I'm Bill Rivers, and this is Showcase Talent. Tonight, our guest is Teresa Nash. It's a rare thing for me to know, personally know, such a multifaceted performing artist. Teresa Nash is an actress, she's a dancer, she's a martial artist, but most importantly, she is a vocalist. When I first heard Teresa sing live, something deep down inside of me knew I would ultimately ask her to be on this show. But for right now, I want you to sit back and listen to the sweet, soulful tones of Teresa while she sings When You Return. In a blue-colored sea Hi, I'm Bill Rivers, and this is Showcase Talent. Those sweet melodic tones you were just listening to is coming from my guest here tonight, Teresa Nash, while she was singing When You Return. Now, Teresa Nash, she's a dancer, an actress, a martial artist, but most of all, she is a singer. Ah, Teresa, welcome. Thank and you. And it's so nice to finally have you here on Showcase Talent. Yeah, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. Okay. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's my pleasure. Mm -hmm. Now, with all the attributes that you have, I want to go directly into your singing, but I want to start from the beginning. So, tell me, when did you start singing, and who or what influenced you? Well, I can say that I've been singing as long as I can remember, really, you know, throughout childhood, um, all through school. I would just always want to be in the chorus, and my friends and I would get together and make little talent shows, you know, any chance to just have some fun with it. And um, I, music was in the house. My father really loved classical music. Yeah. Um, he used to play violin when he was younger. Um, so he, he would play classical, but then my older brothers and sisters listened to rock and roll a lot. So I had really a combination of influences, but I was more drawn to my, for myself, I was drawn to R&B music. Ah, there you go. <laughs> That's my heart. I just, um, you know. As a matter of fact, you told me Motown is something that I you used to watch Motown. a lot, right? Yeah, yeah, the Jackson 5, I mean, oh. It was Stevie Wonder back then was Motown, but um, followed Stevie Wonder's career to this day. He's one of my favorites. He's just a really big influence. And, um, you know, other groups like the OJs. Ah, and the OJs. Earth, Wind yeah. & Fire, and yeah, a lot of. <laughs> now, I'm going to get back to your singing in just a moment. You know, that's why I wanted you here. But also, you are a, a, one of your performing arts is dancing. Now, you said you earned a college degree in theater, music, and art, but you started dancing in college, right? Right. Yeah. T 
tell me a little bit about that experience? Um, well, I can't say that was my very first experience in dancing. I, when I was little, I had a ballet class, but it, you know, it was like I was on the tail, you know, coattails of my big sister. <laughs> so, you know, when um, I went to college, I didn't actually start out in dance. Um, I came out of high school. I graduated high school a whole year early, and I decided that I was going to find a very sort of grounded and reliable career, and I went into nursing. Nursing. I got into a nursing program. <laughs> And I really do, you know, I still am interested in a lot about health because science was, used to be my favorite subject. And, That's um, great. So I think in a few years I'm going to need a nurse. But <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, like studying the anatomy and all, it, it was great. But then when it came to the clinical aspect and being in the hospital and having to actually give a shot to a child or watch uh. a surgery, or, I just realized that that wasn't the right career path for me. Okay. <laughs> so no use fading over the patient. No. <laughs> <laughs> so then, um, you know, still trying to be sort of, you know, like think of a reliable type kind of career. I said, well, then I'll study psych psychology because I'm interested in that. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, that lasts maybe a week or two. <laughs> <laughs> People are a little too weird for me. <laughs> so, you know, um, I was going to minor in theater. I said, you know what? In the meantime, I'd been taking ta dance class, you know, because theater was going to be my minor. And I got into a modern art, a modern dance class, and I really hadn't had any experience with modern dance. It was my first. And it was um, the teacher taught Graham technique, Martha Graham. She was like one of the pioneers in modern dance. What does that entail? It's it's very passionate and and powerful. It's you know it's um, of course modern dance is done barefoot and it's a lot of contractions and just you know it's interpretive dance and uh -huh. um, wow. in that class I just I knew that that's what I wanted to do. So right away I just switched everything over, became a theater major with my concentration in dance and minored in music and, you know, just would yeah, perform. It all started to come together. Yeah, <laughs> I would sing in bands and everything. Oh, good. At one point, you sang with a pop band. In fact, you actually toured Tokyo, you know, and you co-wrote songs and recorded. Tell me about that experience of uh, exp uh, um, touring Tokyo. Wow. Well, actually, I toured all of Japan. Wow. I, I, I didn't start out in Tokyo. Um, my first I had like a two month contract to go there as a dancer and singer and it was one of the small towns called Masayama. Um, uh, I really liked Japan so much that I, I kept trying to get back and I said I want to go to Tokyo and the second trip I got to Nagoya which is sort of a bigger city but not Tokyo. <laughs> the third time I guess was a charm because I got ah, to Tokyo okay. and um, I stayed there for six months and just loved it so much that when I left, I was already thinking about how I could go back. And when I went back, I didn't have a contract. <laughs> I okay. just went because I had made some connections. And um, yeah, so then I, it's funny, I, w I found out an audition. F a company was looking for like a spokesmodel for one of their products. It was mm -hmm. a health drink. And so I went to the audition and I said, but I can sing too. <laughs> 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 and they said, okay, sing. <laughs> so guess what I sang a cappella? What? Loving you. <laughs> oh, there you go. There and you go. I that, hit the high note and everybody was like, you know, blown away. So uh, I, I got to stay in Japan and I actually learned the language. Um, I had to do some office work for them too, but that's beside the point. Um, I, I took that time to learn the Japanese wow. language, and um, eventually I got uh, I got an audition for a Japanese, very well-known Japanese jazz singer named Yasuko Agawa. I was going to be one of her background singers. She and um, myself and another guy, and that's how it all started. Um, I toured with her around the country in you know, big concert halls and everything, it was great. And then her company ended up signing me as wow. a, a solo artist, and I got to record and perform with my own band. So it was just, you know, the best experience was just experiencing in another culture. And yes. you know, just learn so much from that. Yeah. And, and it, having it fun in the meantime, so, you yeah. know. It just broadens <laughs> the mind so much. Yeah. Yes. 
But actually, what I want to hear about is while you were in Japan, you wound up performing bef uh, before Mikhail Baryshnikov. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, that sounds like one hell of an experience. Now, tell me about that. That was amazing because um, he was one of my idols, you know, being a, a, a dancer, and he's like one of the greatest dancers of all time. And he was in Tokyo to perform, and he was at this big party. Um, I think it was the emperor's nephew and his wife were the, the honored emperor. guests. Yeah. The Emperor of Japan's <laughs> nephew. Wow. And I was there with the uh, orchestra, and um, I s they told me he was there, and I actually saw him. We were mingling in, you know, before I began performing, and I just went over to him, and I had to <laughs> introduce myself and say, you know, I was like, you know, kind of starstruck a little bit, and uh, it's just sort of like, oh, you know, I, I love your work, and I'm a really big fan of yours, and I got pictures of us, and it was cool. It was really cool. And that sounds like something I would do. You know, actually, I tried dancing in college for a little bit, you know, but that's when I found out I had all the grace and elegance of a three-legged horse. So it didn't <laughs> work out too well. So. Now, theater has also been a part of your life. You know. now, tell us some of your favorite roles and the type of songs that you sang. Um, one of my favorite roles would be Anita in West Side Story. That okay. is like a classic um, sort of role of a lifetime. So, you know, it's classic musical theater, um, really challenging choreography, and um, just, you know, a really fun role, like strong character. Um, besides uh, Anita, I would say a couple of fun things I did. One was um, I played the opera diva in an, another version of Phantom. Oh. You know, not Phantom of the Opera, but a, a, an original version based on the uh, book. So I played the opera diva in that, and that was good. That yeah, sounds great. Did another off-Broadway show more recently, and um, <laughs> you might be surprised to hear that I played uh, um, a, a Jewish New Yorker, uh -huh. like a stage mom type, really loud, boisterous type character. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet you? Yeah. No. Yeah. And that's, that's called the 702 Punchlines and Pregnant, the Jackie Mason Musical, oh. based on a true story. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. Now, <laughs> you, you, you sang with various jazz groups you know, in, in different venues uh, in and out of New York City, but you also sing pop and R&B songs. Mm -hmm. uh, what I want to know is what is your favorite genre that you like to sing in and why? I'd have to say R&B. It's just, you know, it's been with me the longest. It's my heart. Um, I love jazz, and I'll do, you know, also jazz standards, but I always come back to R&B. Um, I love listening to it and just... Well, that's where my heart is at, too? I love dancing to it, too. Ah. <laughs> I used to. <laughs> <laughs> now let's move on uh, to the next question. All right. Now, I've seen you perform in the musical Soul Heaven written and directed by Brian Davis, one of the producers uh, here at m and And I've seen you perform as Minnie Ripperton, as you just said, Loving You. And loving you is more than just a dream come true. Everything that I do is out of loving you. And down the summer. Yeah. I've seen the end results of these transformations that you go through. Tell me what you go through when you prepare yourself for these character uh, characterization roles. Yeah. Well, I watch uh, videos of them, obviously. I, I'm very familiar with their music because I, I listen to it. But um, just studying the way they uh, you know, perform, their expressions, um, just trying to capture some of their essence to, you know, do justice to, you know, pay a tribute to those great artists. And I had a lot of fun with that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was there that night. It, it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're also well diverse within the martial arts, you know, you, you, that I've seen that you've performed in some of your films. You know, I know you know many different uh, arts that I want you to discuss. 
You know, you're also a black belt. You're also a kickboxer. You're also skilled in weaponry. Uh, I'm kind of wondering what kind of trouble you've been expecting. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, but, but tell me about your, your martial arts. Um, well, I got into martial arts, it's really interesting. I mean, it's something that always interested me, but I hadn't really pursued it. And then I went to a, a Girl Scout event where it was um, self-defense for girls especially. And um, there were three different schools there demonstrating, and the school I ended up signing up with was there and it just you know, it was um, mixed martial arts um, called World Sur World Survival Hisardut. Hisardut okay. is um, it's an Israeli head instructor so there's Krav Maga which is a really like no nonsense knock them out as soon as you can in this <laughs> <laughs> <few> moves. <laughs> um, Life in the city. <laughs> but, you know, also elements of karate, Muay Thai, um, Judo, Jiu Jitsu. And it, it's, it's a system that he devised for self-defense if anyone were to attack you, like on the street, from different grabs and holds to um, attacks with weapon, you know, how to either avoid or disarm things like that. And I studied for about six years. And I did receive my black belt from that school. But I really, there's, there's so many more techniques out there and, and just so much more to keep learning and improving that, you know, even though I'm, I've gotten that black belt, I've, I could consider myself still a white belt. <laughs> 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 All right, how vast is the ocean, okay. <laughs> Okay. You also started your acting career some time ago. You've been in a couple of action films. You know, tell me about your passion for acting, and, and tell me a little bit about uh, th this movie Seals that you're in. Okay. Well, um, acting is really what kind of drew me out of my shyness when I was in, you know, dance. It's, it's one thing to, you know, dance and portray all the emotion without having to speak. <laughs> you know, you okay. express through your body motions, but, um, and singing on stage even, so, you know, you, you have a certain song to sing, but with acting, um, it helped bring out the shyness of me, like, a kind of a quiet person, generally, and more so in the past than I am now, so taking acting classes really helped me come out of my shell. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and then when I studied um, really seriously about you know the scene study and character development, char you know, it it's oh, you went into it in depthly. Yeah, you know, okay. you, there's a lot you, you can consider. Um, an opportunity came up for me, um, actually, with the company that um, produces Seals. Uh, I was first cast in another film, but when I got into Seals, uh, he saw me as a really, uh, <laughs> I don't know why, stern and take charge type person. <laughs> <laughs> I keep getting did? cast like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, again, I did my research on uh, my character. Um, you know, she's out of the Marine Corps, um, tough cookie. So I kind of like researched what females in the military were like and what it would take and watched, you know, some film footage and things like that and, uh, you know, went by the script that he gave me, which was, you know, really just take charge, no nonsense kind of yeah, lady. Yeah, I, I, I so. saw you in there yelling, screaming, yeah. and I'm like, hitting. That, that can't be the <laughs> Teresa shooting. that I know. Yeah, shooting up, beating <laughs> slap downs. I said, <laughs> I could barely get a few words out of it. And here she is. She's going m mad on the screen. You know. Yeah, well. Yeah, as a matter of fact, you know, <laughs> I managed uh, to put together a few clips uh, from Seals to uh, give the people an idea what the movie is like. You know, I'm going to take the time to, sh to show that. Great. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. We decided long ago 
We've been hit! Oh my god! Listen, Mrs. Amanda, when I say move, I want you to run into the car and get your head down. Let's move! A pertinent fact far outweighed the dangers which are cited to justify it. Even today, there is little value in opposing the threat of a closed society by imitating its arbitrary restrictions. For we are opposed There are only a handful world, of people that knew about that detail. Why would they kill an innocent mother and child? So let me see if I follow you on this. You would like to do your own investigation? Yes, Mr. President. I feel very adamant about it. Lieutenant Windsor, are you still there? Yes, sir, Mr. President. So I guess you take this as an excellent opportunity to re-enlist under new management. Oh, yes, sir. Ms. Armeal, this is Lieutenant Jocelyn Windsor of the United States Marine Corps. Formally retired. Only for today. Primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence. Now, as I said when I spoke to some of you beforehand, this country is under false duress. There are certain individuals secretly and financially running this corporation to its knees with their lack of trust and honor for what this country was built on. This covert operation of infiltrating third world countries and disrupting their way of living has got to stop. We the people will not stand by anymore as they send our young men and women off to fight their I got a situation in the main building. As their backyards are being violated, ours is in a mess. We will not stop until we clean up each and every corner. There's a small platoon heading their way. Ghost, you better get your together and pull your team out of there. Okay. Now also, you were in a movie that's not yet out called Bounty Wars. Mm -hmm. you know, tell us a little bit about this movie. Bounty Wars is th my first introduction to the ASC Troopers Touch Entertainment. Um, I first got cast in it and my character is, uh, again, she trains other women and she's like a very, it, um, in charge, but in a different way. Mm -hmm. um, she uses a sword, ah. the katana, a Japanese samurai sword. And so I got training in that for the part. Mm. And uh, uh, to this day, I still love, you know, training in the sword. It's yeah, I it's saw how really effective art. you were with those with those, those swords. Scares me a little bit because I got a little bit too much to slice off here. In this case, you <laughs> got angry at me. <laughs> but Bounty Wars actually, I was in first. It's just taking longer because it's a sci-fi full feature, um, and Seals is an episodic. So I did episode one of Seals, and I'm working on episode two now. But Bounty Wars is a full-length feature film, okay. and with um, it being a sci-fi film, they have a lot of special effects to add to it and things like that. So okay. there's a, a big cast, too. So. I, I saw it. It's, it's pretty big. Yeah. Okay. Had a lot of fun. Though. I also have a, a little clip of a trailer of Bounty Wars, too, that I'm going to love to show you. Oh, great. heard of our confidant's demise. It is a sad loss for us all. Agreed. I'm sure they'll seek us out. You want me to prepare a team? 
<laughs> you know me too well. Who shall I prepare? Jade, Titania, and the twins for now. It is done. Okay. Now, tell me what's on the horizon right now for Teresa Nash. Well, in immediately um, with the film projects that I'm involved in, um, I'll be at Comic Con, New York Comic Con. Um, we'll have a booth there. Uh, and then that's in October. And November, I'm part of a big uh, film festival called the Urban Action Showcase. And the films that I'm in will be presented, will be screened. And so I could be up for, you know, winning the audience choice. You know, there'll be audience choice um, awards. Um, they're going to have a lot of uh, celebrity guests. And there's going to be a big expo for actors and any, anyone in the entertainment field and in action genre in particular. So it's going to be great. Um, on the musical horizon, it's wide open. I'm okay. open to, you know, I'm always open to uh, working with l musicians in various type settings and groups and working on my own songs that I'd like to record. Great. And As a matter of fact, that reminds me quickly, mm -hmm. while we just got a few minutes left, if people want to find out more about you, where can they go? They can go to my website. It's TeresaNash.net. T-E-R-E-S-A. Okay. Ah, there Nash. we go. Nash.net. Okay. All right. Once again, I want to thank you for being on the show. <laughs> this has been a pleasurable experience, you know. And I want to thank all of the viewers out there for tuning in to Showcase Talent, you know. And I want to say thank you. And I want you to have a good night as I sit here and enjoy this lovely, lovely lady. <laughs> uh, once again, thanks. Even more than I know where'd you go? <laughs>